welcome back to another reading your comments video and first of all i have to say it thank you guys so much for 3,000 subscribers i never thought that we'd get to this moment honestly and so it's kind of weird being here and saying that aloud but thank you guys so much and let's honestly just get right into it all right so our first comment i am reading is from one of our regulars abstracts 1027 and i'm reading the at because youtube is dumb and doesn't tell me what your actual name is just what your little at tag is hey you guys how's it going super happy to have been a part of your journey if you could breathe underwater at any depth and be unharmed what shipwreck would you go to visit you have light since it would be dark i think that's an interesting question because i think the most knee-jerk reaction is to go oh well obviously I'd go see titanic but i think there are other shipwrecks that are even more interesting or possibly just as interesting and one of the ones i want to see is ss la Bergeon, since it is still in that northern atlantic area but it isn't as exciting i guess to some people it's hard to find anything honestly about that ship on the internet you got to do a lot of digging so i'd probably pick la Bergeon. at nelly bones says five stops on a dream world cruise favorite christmas movie any memories of big winter storms well, I would say five stops on a dream world cruise. Honestly, my dream world cruise would be a transatlantic journey. So there wouldn't be very many ports of call. But if I did take a dream cruise with ports of call, I'd probably want to go somewhere near Mexico or the Bahamas where it's nice and warm in the Caribbean. My favorite Christmas movie is A Christmas Story. It's a really old movie, but my family watches it every year and it is just the funniest movie. I will quote things from that movie to random people and they look at me like I'm crazy, but my family gets it, so that's where it's important. Any memories of big winter storms? A few years back in my state, we had this thing that we call snowpocalypse, and I'm sure it was across the US. I think it was 2018, 2017, something like that. And it was horrible. <laughs> Our area usually only gets like maximum one to two feet of snow at a time we had like four or five feet of snow and shoveling the driveway every day with that really sucked and my brother and i we were living at my mom's at the time and it just sucked having to shovel the driveway every day it was like okay i did one half you do the other half and then it turned into i did it this day you do it this day and then it turned into i give up <laughs> there was just so much snow there was no way you weren't sliding all over the road ice everywhere and i'd only been a driver honestly for a couple years too so i was a brand new driver and they're just giving me snow it sucked so that was probably my worst big winter storm at leopard one says if you could sail with any famous age of sail explorer who would it be mine would be captain cook castraya lol um i'd honestly this is kind of probably obvious but i'd probably say probably say ernest shackleton because although i do love like captain smith from titanic i think he was admirable Ernest Shackleton had that sense of adventure, and I would love to see that man at work. I really have an admiration for Ernest Shackleton, so I would love to have gone maybe even on the endurance. So, probably say Ernest Shackleton. At Super Disney Turkey 6 t 59 which by the way, still have an awesome username. <laughs> what shipwrecks have been some of your favorites to record and research? What are some of your favorite lesser-known ocean liners, excluding the Olympic and Lusitania class? You caught me there, taking those ones out. So I would say some of my favorites to research have been the ones that either you guys have recommended or I've never heard of before because it's a completely brand new story. And 95% of the time when you guys recommend me something, I start reading the story, go, what the hell is this? And then have to do a deep dive and read every news article that's ever been written about it. Um... I probably still say Akili Laro is one of my favorites. Um, that one was just a video, not only am I really proud of, but I just really fell in love with the ship after researching her specifically. I would say one of my favorite lesser known of the ocean liners would be SS Neuronic, because not very many people know about SS Neuronic's story, and that's the Neuronic that sank in the North Atlantic, because you guys did inform me that there's also one that sank in the Great Lakes. So we'll have to cover that one soon. But I'd probably say SS Neuronic is one of my favorites of the lesser known. At Cap Travels Aviation says, if you could sail on any ship, it doesn't have to be a ship in service if you want, what would it be? 
So for ships and service, I'd pick RMS Queen Mary 2 because I would, like I said earlier, want to take a transatlantic voyage and she's one of the only ones, I think she is the only one that regularly does transatlantic services. Um, for ships that have either been retired, scrapped, sank, any of those things, I'd probably say Olympic because she has had an illustrious career and you could sail on her multiple times and see how she changed over the years. At NDVLADU, says, if you could find out in detail how the sinking or disaster and the reason how it happened of any ship, which would it be? I think that's a really interesting thing because with Titanic, some people might say that, but I feel like we know so many details about it that that would be a waste of an answer. So I would probably say something that we don't know, like SS Neuronic or a ship that other ships have disappeared or even like the MV Seawall so we can really see what happened there. I mean, there's so many ships that it's very questionable about the circumstances or little tiny details can just completely change the story. So finding smaller details out about something like that would be interesting. I might have to go with SS Neuronic again. Sorry for picking on the Neuronic so much, but her story is just really interesting. I mean, it's a mystery. You don't know where that ship is. At D Kruger 1994 says, if you can have a chat with any maritime historian here on YouTube, Mike Brady from Ocean Liner Designs, Sam from Historic Travels, Tom Linsky from Part Time Explorer, ETC, who would it be and why? So I think it's a bit of a loaded question. <laughs> um, I don't think any of the people that I'd want to collaborate with would want to collaborate with me necessarily, but um, I'd probably say if you've ever heard of nautical study he's one of my favorite ship youtubers he puts a lot of humor into his videos which i think is great i do like tom linsky from part-time explorer and of course mike is really really well versed in ocean liners and he's really good at teaching about that i also really like a channel called maritime horrors and he does a lot of great lakes content and so i think that would be fun to collaborate with too at leopard one once again says dear derek and eleanor where do you think MS Munchen is? I figured maybe northeastish from the Azores, but she could be anywhere. Typed while literally crossing the river in Savannah, Georgia, the destination she was heading to. So I did a brief dive into MS Munchen. Not necessarily a topic I'm super well versed in, but I would say you're probably not wrong assuming she's near the Azores. I would say she is nowhere near like Newfoundland or that area. And I wouldn't say she's necessarily in the Bermuda Triangle either. I would maybe put her 100 or 200 miles off Nantucket. But again, I'm not really an expert. I don't really know if there would be a shipping lane in that area, but that would be my guess. At Samilton Adventures says, what do you believe happened to the White Star Liner SS Neuronic that disappeared in the 1890s from Samilton, Leeds, England? And I will say, it's not been my intention to have this entire episode really centered around Neuronic, but that just seems to be the ship we're talking about today. Um, I personally think she might have struck an iceberg. There could even have been something mechanical issue, like a leak sprung somewhere that caused her to sink. But I do think given the area she was in, I think she did strike an iceberg somewhere near Titanic's area within, I'd say like maybe a 400 mile radius, which is big, but I would say probably leaning more toward the Eastern side of things. And she probably went down in that area. Who knows? She could be a closer neighbor to Titanic than we all think, or who knows? Maybe she didn't sink there at all. At Kobe 6185 says, who really pioneered or invented containerization? I think what he might have meant was compartmentalization. Pretty much the same thing, just the real word versus the not real word. It doesn't matter to me. English is a hard language. It's stupid. But I did briefly look this up to kind of give you a little background information. Again, not something I am super familiar with. Bulkhead watertight compartments were originally invented by the Chinese, according to my brief research. These compartments strengthened the junks and slowed flooding in case of holing during the Han and Song dynasties. So I'm guessing that that's when the whole thing started, then it started catching on in other cultures, and now it just seems to be a thing that we still do. And it's smart, because it keeps flooding from taking up an entire area. We've seen, like with Roro Ferries especially, having a big vast area that doesn't have areas that are compartmentalized. 
I mean, it's easy for flooding to just spread like wildfire and not be contained that way. So I think compartmentalization has been really smart in ships. At Clips Films, Melbourne says, I've seen new article of future saying SS United States and give her relocation future images. I know it's been said over and over. What's your thoughts of it? I personally think there's always a chance for SS United States to have these future plans happen. But I always read these articles and I go, I don't think so. Until I actually see it happen, I'm skeptical because there's been so many times with both the SS United States and the RMS Queen Mary that they were supposed to go somewhere and do something special and it never happened. So until it actually happens and I see the structures built and I see success happening around the SS United States, I'm really skeptical of it. At Abstracts once again says, hello, 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 here's one for you. So I'm sure you saw my many, many, many comments on Roblox ship games, and I also get not being interested in the game itself, but is there a chance you guys might check them out in the future? And if so, need any recommendations? So the funny thing is, is I used to play Roblox with my brother, unironically, way back in the day when Roblox was completely different than it is now. It was never a huge thing. The big thing at the time was RuneScape, and that ages me as well. Uh, so I would say I would have no problem playing Roblox because I'm already kind of familiar with it, not necessarily how it is now. They have modernized it, changed it a lot from the last time I played it. But I'd have a lot of interest actually checking out Roblox ship recreations, Minecraft ship recreations. I think there's a lot of love and effort that goes into that that needs to be appreciated and can't be understated. I mean, there are creators here on YouTube that make their whole career off of making these type of recreations of ships, and I think it's just amazing work. So yeah, I would definitely need recommendations for that. Alright everyone, and that's all I've got for you for the reading your comments video. Thank you guys so much for leaving your comments. If you didn't see your comment in this video, no, it's not done on purpose. It's just kind of randomly selecting what I see down there and seeing what I can answer, what I have the best answers for. But thank you guys so much for 3,000 subscribers once again. I think it's just amazing. And although you guys might be giving me the credit, honestly, it's a community thing. We did it together. And we're let's see where we go next. So I will see you guys this Sunday. And have a wonderful day.